Welcome to part two of creating a working piano in Rive. We're going to add some color to the keys. We're going to set up the state machine and we're going to add some sound events in this in this tutorial. When we get into sound events later in the tutorial, you are going to want to have a pro subscription to Rive. I believe you can pay monthly for that. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial, I would highly recommend getting one month of Rive. I love it here. I think you're going to love it too. So now that we've added animation to both our white key and our black key artboards and that those are nested into this artboard, there's a step we have to take now to make sure that this scene can see all of those inputs. So when we go to this input black key pressed, we have to make sure it says expose to parent artboard. I'm going to click that. We'll do the same thing for the white key. Make sure that this input is exposed to the parent artboard. So now let's try it out. We're going to go to our scene full and I'm going to press play. Okay, so you can see that these keys are pressing individually, which is really cool. However, I'm noticing that because these black keys are positioned directly over the white keys, anytime I press a black key, depending on which key I am overlapping with, it will also press the white key that it's adjacent to. So that's one problem I have to solve. I'm going to write that down. The hitboxes for our black keys are overlapping the hitboxes for our white keys. So we are going to have to figure out another solution there. Also, if you click and drag outside of the key without lifting them up, they stay down. So that's another issue that we have to solve. I have to actually click it and let go of it on the key. And then the third issue I'm noticing is that I, I do like that when I press the black key, it's just being clipped to this shape. And I don't like that the white key is coming down and, and revealing this black space at the top. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my black keys. Well, I'm going to extend that white key up, but I'm going to create a clipping shape inside of the artboard so that when I move it up off of the artboard, it will still look like it's stopping at the top. But when we press it down, it'll have more white space at the top, if that makes sense. So let's do that. I'm going to go to design mode for this because anytime you adjust shapes, uh, you want to make sure that they're in design mode, not animate mode, because it will animate that. That's one problem solved. Now let's figure out how we're going to solve the, the overlapping artboard um, issue. I'm going to do this on the fly because I don't know how I'm going to actually solve this. Is this going to work? Let's change the color here. It'll be a lot easier to see. Yeah, this is starting to get more complicated than I expected. So if you wanted to have full coverage for your hitbox on these keys, you need to be, you'd have to have three different nested artboards, one for each of the style of key that it is. So it's like a, uh, you know, a left side key, a middle key, a right side key, and then like a full key, even though full keys don't technically exist. I'm just not going above one octave. So let's try this for now and just to see if it works. It looks like we're going a little too high, so we'll go down with these points. All right, let's try that for now. I do want it to be off or like 0% opacity, but this will be what we use instead of the top of the white key to be our listener on the white key. And I don't think we'll have to adjust anything on the black key, but let's just see. All right, we're going to go to animate. We can keep everything the same inside of this listener, but we're going to change the target from white key top to this white key hitbox. And we'll do the same thing on this other one. That should have changed all of these white keys, but let's find out. We'll go to this P, uh, piano scene full state machine one. See, and that's working much better because now I'm not hitting both keys at the same time ever. All right, so here's how we're, here's how we're gonna do it. Now I have a left key, a middle key, and a right key, and a full key. Before I adjust the hitboxes, I'm gonna go back to my artboard where all the keys are, and I'm going to replace each of these nested artboards with the correct left, middle, or right key. Let's do that first. This artboard should be left. This one will be middle. This one will be right. That only took me like a minute. <laughs> it only took me a minute to replace all of these artboards with uh, their correct ones, but now I just have to adjust that hitbox. So let's make these 100%. The left one should have no space on the left here. There we go middle one and then we'll turn that off and then for the right one let's get that hitbox to 100 percent 
This one we can just remove those corners now, all the way to the edge. Here's what it looks like with all the hit boxes on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all those off. But now we should see that anytime we hit any of these keys, it will absolutely press it without pressing the black key. Oh my goodness, we did it. All right, so we're almost done. That's pretty much it, right? Except we still have that one problem where if we click it and then drag outside of the key, we it doesn't come back up. The pointer leaves the key. It needs to also go back to the not pressed state. So let's just uh, let's change change this up a bit. We don't need a hover layer. We just need a key press layer, but we need to make sure that this hitbox listens for when the mouse exits as well. So we have that right here. That's going to set pressed to false. This should work now. Let's try it. Yep. So now when we move off. It's setting the press to false. That's perfect. Okay, let's keep going. So I couldn't help myself. I had to add another layer of color so that when it's pressed, there's a little bit more responsiveness to it. And you can tell that that button is being pressed at that moment. You can copy the uh, styles by pressing Control Alt C and it says copied style. And then I should be able to move right over into this one and paste the style. There it is. Let's do it to this one too. I'm going to copy the style of this bottom one. Control Alt C. Control V. Uh, so that's there now, but in the design mode, we can hint that these should be off by default. And we can do that by just making sure that all these fills are set to 0% in the design mode. They still have that that fill, but it's all set to 0% now in the design space. And now we can animate that from 0 to 100 when we get to the pressed and not, not pressed states. So let's just go ahead and do that. On the not pressed, we need to make sure that, that those fill layers are set to 0. That we set a key here, because again, remember the Google Maps thing. We need to make sure that they the state machine knows where we're starting. And on the down state, Let's make these 100%. So now on not pressed, pressed. Yeah. Let's do the same thing for these. We're going to make sure that this fill and this fill have a 0% to start on the not pressed. And then on the press down, you should be able to just grab them real quick and make those keyframes. We're going to do the same thing for the other two. And I'll just fast forward through this. Okay, so I still need to add the white key move away listener for pointer exit, and we're gonna just check this as false. Let's do that for the others as well. We did left, we did middle. Let's do right. We need to also make sure that there's a uh, listener for the black key move away. Okay, so we set the pointer exit, black key press needs to be false. So whenever we exit on accident, it will not stay pressed even if we haven't lifted the mouse. All right, so let's add some color here. We're gonna go back to design mode. What should the color be? And then we're gonna make sure that that's set to zero by default. All right, so once again, we're gonna make sure that these uh, top level fills are set to zero by default. So uh, on the animate mode is where we wanna add that for the pressed and not pressed. So let's make sure there's a keyframe on the not pressed, and then on the pressed, we're gonna set these to 100. And I think that's that takes care of everything. We've added an additional color for when these keys get pressed. We've added a state that listens for when our mouse moves away on accident. And we've made sure that all of the keys have their own special hitbox. So I, don't, I think I wanna lighten up the edge here or reduce the amount of, something needs to happen here on the color. So let's change in the animate mode. All right, so what's next? For now, I think we should just try to add some sounds. Okay, so full disclosure, I actually finished out the whole keyboard with sound and everything uh, between the last part of that tutorial and this. And so this is the state of the keyboard right now. So it has the note names, it has the sounds attached to them. There's events associated with it. 
but I kind of had to figure it out as I went. And so rather than record that whole process, I'm just gonna show you how I did it. And that way, hopefully it will be enough for you to continue on and actually do it yourself. So let's start with what a sound event is. Uh, you kind of have to understand what events are to begin with to understand how a sound event works. But basically, the way an event works is right up here, you've got this button that allows you to add events to artboards. So in this artboard, this piano scene full, which has all of our black keys and white keys as nested artboards, right over here. So these white keys are all of our nest are all of our artboards that are nested into this main artboard. I have to be selected into the artboard and I can add an event just like this. Click it and I can put it anywhere. Usually near the near the artboard is where it makes the most sense. And I can call it key pressed. Events are basically an additional way that you can signal to Rive that you want it to do something. So at various points in the state machine, you can trigger events. You can have something wait until an event happens to be able to do something else. So it's, it just adds another layer of interactivity to your state machine. But I think importantly, it allows you to trigger things that happen in other artboards because an event happened in this one artboard. So for example, on each of these white keys and the black key, there's a key pressed event. And I have keyed the reporting of that event at the very beginning of the press down timeline. So once again, just to kind of recap, there are different ways to report events. So far, I feel like my favorite way to do it is to just keyframe it in the timeline right up here. There's a little report event and you can grab the keyframe on any event that you have. So here on the black key, whenever it's pressed, this event gets reported. Not gonna worry about these note name animations until the next tutorial, uh, but we will add some sound events here. So here's how we do it. In this artboard on piano scene full, I'm gonna start adding them right below. We'll call this C. So we have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, all the way up to C, high C. I'm just gonna call this one low C. And then right up here on this events tab, we need to change this from type general to audio. I'm just gonna say this right now. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be to find clean, good piano sounds for each note on the keyboard. With the note length that I needed, even the paid sound effects libraries online did not have decent quality piano sounds. I hit up my friend, the very talented Dylan Cassano, who is a, an amazing animator and designer, but he also does sound design on occasion. So he had a keyboard and was able to record these sounds for me as WAV files. And so I provided those for you in the links in the description. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> Please go follow Dylan Cassano on Instagram. He's the best. So let's just start with how to import audio. It is really easy to add audio assets to Rive, just like any assets. All you have to do is click over from your hierarchy to the assets panel, and you can just drag from your file browser any sound that you want into this audio assets panel. Again, you do need to have a paid subscription to Rive for this. So I have each of these notes uh, as a single WAV file that I've just dragged in from my Finder or File Explorer. You can just go through and you can press play and see how they sound. And so now these exist as assets in our project and we'll be able to see them when we go to our sound events. So let's go back to this piano scene. We'll grab this event here that says C low. Here we go, let's drag down on this asset panel and we can find the note from our assets. This is the low C, there we go. And I'm gonna do that for the rest of these notes and just add them to the panel here. So we've added all of the correct sounds to their own sound events here on this main piano scene full artboard. With all of that there, I'm gonna go ahead and group these as uh, sounds. In order to get these sounds to play, we're gonna set up listeners on these keys. So the cool thing about how these are set up in this main artboard is that even though they're all nested versions of the same artboard, because they have all of their own object space in this artboard, I can set up listeners on each of these just like this. I'm gonna grab this high C key. If we add a listener, it's only going to look for any events that are associated with that key. So as you recall, if you go over here to this white key full, we have this one event called key pressed and that triggers whenever we press the key, right? So in this artboard, 
we can actually grab that, set a listener for that event, key pressed, and then over here, instead of setting input, we're going to actually add a report event. And this is where we'll find all those sound events. So this is the high C key, so let's just add it there. All right, now let's see if it works. I'm gonna press this state machine. It does. Isn't that cool? We're gonna do that same thing for all these other keys. They all have the key pressed event right here that fires only when it's pressed because we set that keyframe inside of the pressed timeline. Press down timeline, the key pressed event gets fired right there. All we have to do is for each of these keys, add a new listener. It's gonna go right down the line here. And before we do the black keys, I'm just gonna do them all on the white keys just, to, just so this part can kind of sink in. So on the B key, we've got the key pressed event. And instead of setting the input, we're gonna add a report event and then we'll change it to B. A key, A. And I'll just fast forward through the rest. So now all of these white key nested artboards should have a listener attached to them in this main artboard so that each of these white keys should report their associated sound event. Let's try it. Nice. So I think I will put these all into a folder inside of the listeners panel called white keys and I'll just drag them all into there. And let's start making some new listeners for these. Now we have a working keyboard with sounds and color, fully interactive. And so the next step we're gonna take on the next tutorial is going to be adding some note names that fly up from each key, which will hopefully help them learn the names of the notes on the keyboard. As always, I would encourage you to try to figure it out for yourself before we get to that tutorial. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.